Welcome and good evening. I would like to call to order the May 9th, 2023 regular meeting of the Everett Public School Board of Directors to order. We will now have the land acknowledgement given by student representative Alice Gilbertson. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Kosalish, Snohomish, and Tulalip peoples. We express our deepest respect and gratitude to the ancestors of this land on whose shoulders we stand. In Everett Public Schools, we strive to create equitable outcomes and build a culture of inclusive belonging for all students, teachers, staff, and community. Thank you very much, student Rep. Gilbertson. We'll now move to section 3.0, which is a flag salute. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the secretary please call to roll? President Lassane. Present. Vice President Mitchell. Director Herman. Present. Director Nichols. Present. Director Mason. Present. Student Representative Colley. Present. Student Representative Gilbertson. Present. Thank you very much. Our first item of business is the adoption of the agenda. Dr. Sossman, would you introduce this evening's agenda? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Directors, and to the public this evening, to our amazing students out there too. Tonight's agenda contains the following, the superintendent's report, segment for board comments, segment for public comments, segment for routine business, segment for information and discussion, segment for unfinished business, segment for upcoming agenda items. Since publishing the agenda, the following changes were made to the agenda. Item 7.01, the superintendent's report, the presentation was added. Item 10.13, approval of resolution 1292, authorization contracts to administrative staff, the sample contracts were added. Item 10.14, approval of resolution 1293, reemployment of non supervisory certif certificated employees, sample contracts were added. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Salzman. Is there a motion for adoption of the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Director Mason. It's been seconded by Director Herman to adopt the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. The agenda has been adopted. We'll now move to section 6.0, which is our recognition section. And this evening, we have no recognitions planned for this meeting. Moving now to section 7.0 is the superintendent's report. Dr. Salzman. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Directors, and the public this evening. This week is Teachers Appreciation Week. <laughs> We have amazing teachers who make a difference in the lives of our students and families. Thank you so much, teachers. Please take a moment to reach out to your teachers and let them know how much you appreciate them. And if there are teachers in the audience right now, please stand up, okay, so I can see you, okay? Thank you so much. We are very grateful for our school nurses every day, but do you know what Wednesday is? It is their special recognition. Please take a moment to thank and honor these incredible individuals on National School Nurses Day. They are amazing. Thank you, nurses. I'd like to thank the outstanding PTSA leaders from Jackson High School. They are Washington State's PTA, PTA's 2023 Outstanding PTA of the Year. And I'm so proud of them. I want to congratulate them today for their recognition for Jackson High School. Congratulations. Multicultural nights. Our schools continue to host multicultural nights, and they're always a fun learning experience, celebrating families and sharing their culture, food, music, and dance. And I will tell you, there's been so many, and the attendance has been outstanding. So 
Thank you for everybody that's been attending, and thank you for those that have been organizing that. Much thanks. Well, let me tell you about a very special thing called the Third Grade Students Earning Pride Lunch. Each week, teachers nominate students showing strong citizenship in their classrooms. They sit at a special table with a friend on Fridays. Great job to our third grade frogs. Congratulations. <laughs> so you can guess what school that is, okay? Orchestra and band placing at the state with the arts. Jackson High School String Quartet. Julie Yi, Austin Lim, Kyla Shin, and Hu Yoon placed third at state solo ensemble. This is the first for the Gen Jackson High School Orchestra program, so I wanted to highlight that. Arthur Gim also earned third place at state in the clarinet solo category. Congratulations to these student musicians and to other and all student musicians that enjoy the music and arts in our school district. Congratulations. Tonight's gonna to be really special because ASB is presenting, but I much wanna say thank you to the ASB leaders from our high schools because I've enjoyed our discussions to hear your voice and our breakfast uh, times that we share together. And you're giving me great insight of what's happening in our district, but mostly in the lives of our students of what they go through every day, just not in school, but in their daily lives. So it's been a pleasure having breakfast with you in those mornings and I've had a great time listening to you. Please join us on May 19th at our Enrollment and Community Resource Fair here at the CRC from 4 to 7 p.m. on May 19th. Families will learn about providers in our community and in our schools. What a great event. Service providers, including legal services, health and mental health services, education and training resources and more. Guess what? It'll be fun activities for our kids too, but a great night for all families. So we hope to see you on May 19th. Well, it's been 20 years, but I have to say this, that the Everett Public School System will host the WIA 3A and 4A State Baseball Ball Tournament right in our town of Everett, okay? I hope that everybody in our community and school community, but also in our local community, can come out and cheer for your favorite team on May 26th and May 27th at Funco Field. I promise there'll be a lot of sun and a lot of exciting <laughs> baseball. So I look forward to seeing everybody in our community. Thank you so kindly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Salsa. Look forward to the state baseball championship. We'll now move to section 8.0, which is board comments. And the purpose of this agenda item is for directors and student representatives to have the opportunity to share what they've encountered through the work within the district, their particular schools, and in their particular community as it pertains to the work of the board. So we will start at the far end with our, no, you don't want to start here? Okay, let's start here with Dr. <laughs> Director Herman and we'll make our way around and then up. end with myself. <laughs> is that okay, Director Herman? That is absolutely okay, thank okay. you. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> We'll I, I just wanted to report out um, recently I had the opportunity to meet with um, Washington Family Engagement's um, Parent Leadership Training Institute, the PLTI class, the spring cohort, and share my experiences as a school director. And uh, this is such a neat program. They offer it in the fall and the spring. It's free. It's 12 weeks long and in collaboration with Everett Community College. Um, and I asked how, how what, what, what does that look like now that it's been in operation for several years and they have about 500 graduates and a couple hundred of those graduates are from Everett. So when I look at pictures, I've, I've seen parent leaders from our district, um, staff members who have gone through that class and it's all about learning civic engagement. Um, so I, I got to join in the uh, part of the curriculum on understanding the public school system. So hats off to WAFE Family Engagement, um, Washington Family Engagement, and uh, Addie Simmons, their director for that, that program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Herman. Director Dinkos. Uh, <clears throat> just a few brief things. It's always great to see the, those recognitions in the superintendent's report because we get these just barrage of emails about different things and it's nice to have it kind of summed up and see how excellent our our district is doing in different areas um, i just want to re reiterate my thanks to the teachers and uh, school nurses i know our local school school nurse knows my son very well he <laughs> seems to be in there every other week um, and uh also wanted to mention uh, multicultural nights i know um 
Emerson's Multicultural Night is the 25th of this month. And the other thing that's going on in Emerson is they are having a second grade garage sale. So if you've got unused, you know, electronics, clothes, toys, whatever it may be, and you want to donate that to help them raise funds, that they would uh, greatly appreciate that. Reach out to the uh, building administration directly if you'd like to donate. Thank you. I like that idea of the garage sale. I'm going to stop by and drop off some things. Get rid of a few things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I feel like my update is repetitive because once again, I'm um, able to um, look at the partnerships we have with throughout our district and um, in attending the Cocoon House Butterfly Celebration, which is just a really special opportunity for um, some of our students to uh, graduate uh, from Cocoon House, which is just uh, the the words and the event is it's like goosebumpy the whole time. It's just really cool. Um, and then also, um, since our last board meeting, we had a special meeting and we had an opportunity to learn about some of the other partnerships um, that we've established, some new, some um, older, um, to help support our families and, and really wrap around services, everything from, from dental to clothing to housing. Um, and it's just, it is amazing, you know, we say things like, oh, it takes a village, but it really is incredible how far our community goes to make sure that our kids are successful. Um, and I just, I'm always so appreciative when I have an opportunity to learn more about that. And then lastly, um, aside from saying also a thank you to our teachers and nurses who have certainly stepped up these last many years and just the deepest gratitude and appreciation. But I wanted to say to the students, I say this every year, but you don't get to hear it every year because you're not here every year. This is one of our favorite meetings of the year <laughs> to get to sit here and hear from our students. And um, it's not only the financials, which are important for us to understand um, how you're running your SB budgets, but also to see how you're using those funds. And I think to me, that's the most heartwarming to see how you reach out into your school communities to really support your fellow students. So I'm just looking forward to that. So all in there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Mason. Hi. Student Representative Colley. Hi. So we have our spring surprises going on right now. Our ASB is running that, which is very amazing. It's um, you get to sign up on a Google Doc and put in a thing that you would like, and the ASB comes and delivers it to your class. Um, we also had AP testing that is just coming to an end this week. Uh, that's been very stressful for most students, but <laughs> it's almost done now. Um, I'd also want to say happy Asian American and Pacific Island Heritage Month. Um, we, everyone is getting ready for graduation. It's almost coming. We're very excited. And we had our breakfast with Dr. Salzman and the ASP leaders, and that was very good. It was great to hear all the ASP leaders talk about things going on at their school and anything that's happening. And it also wanted to say that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, our schools are safe, but things are happening in America all around that everyone's aware of. So just want to let you know that all the resources are available at our schools with mental health specialists and therapists and counselors that we can go to. So thank you to all of the people helping us. Thank you very much, Representative Colley. Representative Gilbertson, it's your turn. Hi. Um, so we have AP testing going on as well at school. We also heard very stressful for people, but almost over. And Everett High had the multicultural night. Sadly, I did not get to attend, but I've heard very good things about it. A lot of people enjoyed it. There's really good food and stuff. And then our senior prom is coming up for Everett High too. And I'm excited that I'll be able to attend that and see how it goes out, plays out. So yeah. Thank you very much. Good rep Colin. Thank you. I had the opportunity to attend the Washington Association of School Administrators and the Snow Owl um, Rep Regional Area uh, at their honorary awards recognition. And I need to talk about this because there were some really great people that were recognized during this, this um, awards reception uh, from the Everett Public Schools direct, uh, District. Three people were recognized, in fact, uh, Mr. Kevin Gaboni, 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 who is from Allstate Insurance Company, but he was given the award for community leadership 
and as for his partnership with Everett Public Schools and our internship programs that we have during the summertime. He's worked very hard to ensure that our students have the opportunity to fulfill their summers with internship programs or opportunities within Everett as well as within other areas, uh, businesses associated here in our county, in fact. But there was another rep uh, person who was awarded the Student Leadership Award, our own Benta Kali. She was given the award for her dedication and student involvement and representation here at her school and within the district and on the Everett Public Schools Board of Directors. So I would like to thank her very much and, and congratulate her for her award that she received. We also had another uh, employee, a former employee who is now retired, Mr. Jeff Moore. He was a former CFO here at Everett Public Schools and he is now retired and he was presented an award for all of his years of service with the, dif with the district. And I would like to congratulate all of the honorees, especially our student, our own student rep, Ben Takali, for their involvement in making Everett Public Schools the high caliber school district that it is. And thank you for your hard work. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> We'll now move to section 9.0, which is our public comment section. And there are no individuals stepping forward to speak with the board this evening. Thank you. We'll now move to section 10.0, which is our consent agenda. Dr. Salzman, would you introduce the tonight's consent agenda? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Directors and the public this evening. The board's consent agenda includes repetitive business items such as meeting minutes, personnel actions, expense vouchers, surplus lists, gifts, grants, and recurring contracts. Sometimes it includes items that occur less frequently but are of routine business nature. These items are usually reviewed by the board in the Friday report one or more weeks before the board meeting. This gives directors time to ask staff questions or to consider discussion about the policy implications of those items. The board votes on the consent agenda in a single motion. By its definition, a consent agenda is not debatable. In the case of this consent agenda, the superintendent's office received and answered questions regarding the approval of salary schedules. The consent agenda is presented as published for board approval. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Salzman. A motion to adopt a consent agenda is in order. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by D Director Nichols that we approve the consent agenda. And it's been se seconded by Director Herman that we approve the consent agenda. Does any director wish to remove an item from the consent agenda, place it into new business section of this agenda so that it can be heard? President Lassane, I'd like to move item 10.07 into new business for uh, further discussion later in our meeting. Very well. Is there, does this require a, a motion? It does second. require a motion. Is, second. is there a motion that that's your motion? Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Director Mason and seconded by Director Herman that we, we remove item 10.07 and place it under new business. Are there any further discussion? Are we able to discuss? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. any motion? Is um, it, it is a motion. We'll, we'll be discussing later in new business. Further on, on just the movement of this item and placing it into new business. Um, I would just say that um, while I agree with the intent of moving it um, at this point, I think it would be better served by being a dedicated um, agenda item at a later meeting. Um, there's nothing, there's no action to be taken on this. Um, 
you know, nothing's going to change, things like that. Um, so to me, it's kind of. Are you asking that it be submitted as an amendment to this motion? No, no, no. I'm just just my discussion on this is just saying I don't I don't really feel the need to pull this out at this meeting. OK. Hearing no request for amendment, let's vote on the uh, motion that is on the table. All those in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. No. Those no saying abstentions. Okay, the motion has been approved. We will move item 10.07 and place it into new business for further discussion. Okay, continuing on to the original motion. All those in favor of the consent agenda being approved as it is without item 10.07. Please respond by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. The consent agenda without section 10.07 has been approved. 10.7 will be placed into new business for further discussion. Okay. Very well. We'll now move to section 11.0, which is our strategic progress monitoring. There are no strategic progress monitoring reports scheduled for this agenda. We'll now move to section 12.0, which is our information and discussion section. The, the first item of business is 12.01 which is the Associated Student Body Budget. And I see Ms. Tress is at the podium. Hi. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you, Director, uh, President Lassane and Directors, Board of Directors. Today, we will have each of our four high schools coming up here to present on their ASB budgets, their revenues, and their expenditures, <clears throat> and their related activities that they've gone over throughout the years. So we are gonna start this with Cascade High School. So So your presentation is already out there. When you're done, you just go ahead and hit the escape and I'll take care of the rest. But hopefully the Okay. Hello, Kelly Rogers, ASB advisor at Cascade High School, and I'm here to introduce our amazing student leaders who will be presenting their budget team today. Um, unfortunately, our president is concussed again at the same time of year. And so fortunately, we have an amazing vice president who happily steps in at the last minute to fill in. So we have Tim Shim, our vice president, um, Zach Lopez, our incoming ASB president, Trevin Pham, our current treasurer, and Jamari and Mori, our incoming ASB treasurer. Um, I just want to say thank you for inviting us to this meeting. And today we'll be going over for your approval the 23-24 ASB budget. We'll be going over the revenues and expenditures as well as the breakdowns of both of those. And then we'll also be going over the fund balance comparisons. Next up, we have the budget development, which we'll go over the ASB budget process and the distribution of revenue. And then lastly, the best part of the slideshow is the ASB snapshot, which is we go over major fundraising events, club events and activities, mm -hmm. community service events, points of pride, and suggestions for future. And at the end of our slideshow, we're gonna we're gonna open the floor for some questions. And I'm gonna pass it on to Trevin, our treasurer. All right, thanks, Tim. So for our 2023 through 24 ASB budget uh, for revenues, we have an estimated beginning fund balance of $253,750. For total revenues, we estimate $528,395, which puts our total available resources at an estimated $782,145. Now, I would like to point out the significant increase in anticipated revenue into our general student body account from the 
to 23 budget to our 2023 to 24 budget at the same time that clubs is decreasing. Now, this is due to capacity, which we built for our band and choir trip originally in the band account under clubs. But for the 23 through 24 budget, we are building that into the events account under general student body. This is so that the band and choir clubs have a more accurate account report for club expenses during the year. This is something we've done for these clubs in past years and it's worked well for them. Moving on to our 2023 to 24 budget expenditures. We estimate total available resources at $782,145 with total expenditures estimated at $579,039 which leaves our ending fund balance at an estimate of $203,106. Again, I'll like to point out the increase in general student body from the 2022 to 23 budget to the 23 through 24 budget at the same time that club is decreasing. Again, that is due to the movement from uh, the band trip capacity from the band account to the events account. Now I'd like to go into the 2023 through 24 budget breakdown of revenues. As you can see, a bulk of our revenue comes in from our general student body, with a third of our revenue coming in from clubs because they are expecting <coughs> a fair amount of fundraising. For our 2023 through 24 budget breakdown of expenditures, there's a slight decrease in general student body because we have decided to transfer those funds into clubs and athletics in order to fund their activities. Uh, we are still keeping a large portion of funding in our general student body for activities for all our students, for things such as yearbooks, dances, and et cetera. Going on to our 2023 through 24 budget fund balance comparison, we estimate an ending fund balance of $203,106. As you can see, our budgets have been fairly consistent across the years. I would like to point out the decrease in clubs from the 2022 through 23 estimated actuals to the 23 through 24 budget. That is due to us asking clubs to spend down their money at which they are doing successfully. We were doing this so that the students which raise the money into the clubs and athletics get their money um, being used back on them. And mm -hmm. we've also closed inactive clubs and um, taken their balance that had balances. Um, now I'll bring over to Jamarion to talk about our budget development. Now into our um, budget development process. Our process for this was that we asked clubs and athletics to build their own budgets and we as ASB let them know what to anticipate so they could plan fundraisers into their budgets. For clubs, many clubs have found great success in concessions of Angels at the Wind and also uh, concessions at, their, at our own uh, athletic events. For athletics, we told them that we'd cover their equipment, we'd cover their needs like equipment, game balls, and then split the cost of jerseys, but to their own wants, they'd have to cover that with the own funds made by them. Now onto our revenue distribution. For our 2023 to 24 budget, our revenue for ASB cards are $21,000, our vending machines are $4,000, and our dances are $10,000, making a total of $35,000 in our 2023 to 24 budget. In the next slide, I will talk about um, the increase, the small increase in our dances. Our priorities for this were that we were conti to continue to make uh, school events that build community of students. For our dances, one of our biggest events are the dances themselves. We bring in about $10,000 in revenue, but it's not considered profit. Therefore, our ASB card sales help cover costs since ticket sales cannot do that alone. Dances used to pull in a big revenue, but as of this year, we've had to, had to transfer money from other accounts to fund the dance costs. For mm -hmm. our clubs, we have decided to close inactive accounts and the money pulled from those inactive accounts were now put to more clubs for next year. And then for athletics, there's $15,000 set aside for their next years, for their needs next year. Now on to Zach to speak about the ASB snapshot. Thank you, Jamarion. Uh, now on to some of the more fun stuff, the events. 
presented by me and Tim that we do this year. Mm. Our ASB Snapshot, our major fundraising events. We have Homecoming as one of our biggest major fundraising events because it had over 800 students, which is about half of our student body. This was a really fun dance to be at, a great atmosphere. We also tend to keep ticket costs low so that everyone can come, feel welcome, feel involved. Ticket costs are $10 with ASB, $15 without, $20 with ASB at the door, and $25 without. Now we, we also sell vintage jerseys, clothing items, uh, our ASB surpluses, old athletic uniforms, and sells them to the student body so they can have some more CHS pride. Go Bruins. <laughs> Uh, all the money that we make from selling those vintage clothing items, we give right back to the athletic teams so that they can purchase more uniforms in the future when needed. Uh, class fundraising is also something we do for, to hope, in hopes to build some extra cash for certain classes. Our seniors did a Rip City popcorn sale in hopes to build some extra cash for their senior ball, which is coming up. And our ASB officers and class officers did a wreath sale, which did well. Our ASB snapshot in club events and activities. Our Black Student Union led our MLK assembly, which was one of the most success successful assemblies of the year. Along with hosting the assembly, our BSU also performed a dance for the school, which everyone loved. They also brought out a guest speaker, Ivan Gaskin, shared amazing, a lot of amazing life lessons. One was working together with your peers, how much easier it will make life. We're starting to see an increase in our clubs, in sport, our clubs. Our DECA team is actual, actually in the national competition. Our, our HOSA and BAN team are both state competitors. Our cheer team, which is not on here, won nationals, like always. <laughs> <laughs> and our math team is actually getting back into the swing of things. After COVID, they're able to sell pies on March 14th, 314, 3.14, 159. I'm not going to finish that. It's pretty long, but that, those are those slides. and. Now we welcome Tim for the rest. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much, Zach. Um, now for community service projects. One of the biggest community service projects Cascade holds is actually our annual food drive. And this year we've raised over 40,000 non-perishable items, around $15,500 and around 13,000, or not 13,000, 1,300 gifts. And we distributed these to uh, families across Everett, Washington, about 160 families and to three food banks. Next up, we have the Snohomish County Transition Fair, and this is a fair hold, held by um, Snohomish County, and it is a fair where uh, families can come to one place to gather information for members with disabilities, and ASB helped run this event very smoothly. And next up, we have the blood drive. This year, the blood drive was different since ASB usually runs the blood drive. This year, Hosa stepped up into a leadership position to run not one, but two blood drives this year. So that's very good for clubs, for the new clubs coming up. Lastly, we have Fun Fest. And in the name, it's fun. It's a fall carnival. Sorry. It's a fall carnival event where we hold for elementary students, where um, athletics clubs and ASB hold booths, where we can give them out for some free candy. And then next up, we have Points of Pride. Um, this year, one, one of the main ways we Increased pride at our school is our dances and especially our Tolo dance. Um, like Zach said, Tolo is one of the most successful dances we have and a lot of people come up. And this year we wanted to give more to the students and asking them. So we wanted more student involvement in the decision of like our theme. So we sent out multiple surveys to ask about what the theme should be. And there's a tie between Western and, and, Western and space. Mm -hmm. So we just combined them into Space Cowboy. So, and then like I said earlier, um, we wanted to focus on giving back to our students. Um, and by this, uh, through this, we did the spring egg hunt, which is we just hide eggs around the school and kids can find them and turn them in for small prizes and candy, as well as hot cocoa in the mornings. And who doesn't like hot cocoa? So we love that. And, for, and lastly, for pep assemblies, this year we've had three pep assemblies with a, which, with a which has increased pride around our school. One of the most successful pep assemblies we had was Bruegel Fest, which is actually at Ever High School. It's a basketball game. Uh, we did a student versus staff basketball game during our actual assembly, which was really successful because students we were talking about for weeks and they kept asking for more student and staff basketball, or like student staff involved stuff in our assemblies. Lastly, I'd like to talk about suggestions for the future. Um, 
This year, we wanted to implement the Five Star app into promoting more student involvement in our school. And the Five Star is a way is an app where students can earn points, um, earn points by 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 contributing in Spirit Weeks, coming out to games and other events. When they can use those points for perks and like prizes, I guess. And this year we do lunch activities, but we want to con continue this next year with new ideas with lunch activities like karaoke during lunch, Mario Kart during lunch, and as well as Kahoot occasionally. <laughs> and next year we want to implement campus cleanup since we, as leaders, we feel like we should keep our campus clean and help out our custodians and the, and the staff that help clean the, um, clean the school. Mm -hmm. So we want to implement this idea, not into just the leaders, but to the students as well. And finally, I'd like to open the table to some questions. Yeah. Directors, would any like to start off and ask the first question? Director Herman, you've got it. Uh, first of all, thank you. you um, I love seeing student leadership at the school and really doing all of those aspects of building the school community. So thank you so much for stepping up to that role. Um, with you all going first, you get one of my basic questions. And I was wondering if you could field just very briefly how clubs are formed. And I appreciate that you were saying you close inactive clubs. What what exactly is that process? Um, what does that look like? Um, the process to that is we essentially we go over our like a database, I want to say we have. And it's essentially just a list of all the clubs that we've made and had over the past few years. and. Throughout over the years, some of those is closed because um, some students just decide not to do it anymore. And so due to that, when we still continually fund them, we're putting money into them, but no students are actively doing that. And so instead of just leaving those accounts open, we decided to close those and just keep it, keep the money from that that we kept, that we made, and then we just simply uh, fund it to more things that are still open that students still like to do today for more clubs. Thank you. And just real quickly then, if it if a group of students wants to form a club, do they come and present to the ASB? What, is, what does that look like? I don't really know, but if, <laughs> if that were the case, I'm sure ASB could, maybe they could present it and we could probably talk to our higher up advisors like our counselors and stuff and see if we can make it happen for those students. Thank you. Yeah. Director Mason, you have questions. I have a, a couple comments and a question. Mm -hmm. a great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, and I really appreciate you taking that fund balance and, and mm -hmm. putting it back into your clubs and allowing them to use the money now um, rather than just kind of keep carrying it forward. That's something that we always like to really encourage. I also like that you just said, I don't know, because that's really important. You know, when you're on a podium, you kind of want to know everything, but it's really important to say, I don't, or I can find out later. Um, and then um, I just was curious, my question is, your vending machine revenue was going down over the years. What do you know why um, you had less, you're, you're planning on less revenue? Does it have to do with um, how much they're being used or what's in them or? Um, it's going down because we feel like the um, vending machines we have, we've noticed that not a lot of students use them and we do pour a good amount of money into it. And so we just thought, why not make less to where we can have more money to just fund more events that we have and host. And maybe we can even do more events that we usually don't do. So we yeah. have that money to at least fund and make something new for students. Great. With just the money that we lose, well not lose, but just lower. Thank you. Yeah. And also, I just, um, I'm not sure if um, anyone has mentioned this to you, but these meetings are recorded. So one, you can go home and watch yourselves if you want. <laughs> but maybe more importantly, you might have a mom in your life or someone else special that would want to see your presentation and it is available later. So thank you very much. Okay. I would, I'll, I have a couple questions for you. Before we go, I, I didn't know if Director Nichols. Go ahead. Okay, I had a couple of questions. Um, I would like to say congratulations. You did an excellent job, and your presentation was fabulous. It was really great, and thank you very much for stepping forward and being leaders at your school. That's most important. My question to you is, and they hadn't asked my other questions about the clubs. When we have uh, students that are no that aren't involved in clubs, but may not also be in athletics. 
how do you engage them to come out to some of the dances and the club events, even though they may not be involved in those clubs, but maybe they're looking for an involvement somewhere? You know what to say. Um, so for that, like you said, for our dances, um, if they don't want to have a club and if they don't do athletics, then that's okay. We're not going to force them to do that. But we, what we do do, like at our Tolos, is that we do um, make event. We do bring in like types of events and things you can do at um, Tolo. So like we had like mini golf, or we had a cotton candy machine. Mm -hmm. We had like glow sticks. We had uh, spray on tattoos, and then some kid brought in his uh, system so they could play games. So. You know, there's that group of kids that don't want to dance and they don't want to be seen in that spotlight. So then in the background, they have the chance to just be them and play games with their friends and just be that. And we may not do clubs or have anything to access them, to have something to interest them, but we do try to at least acknowledge them and things that we do host as a school. And my second question is, <clears throat> when you have students that may not be able to afford ASB cards, you know, can't get mm -hmm. those cards, how do you support them? How at the beginning of the year do you let people know that ASB is here for you? Even if you may not be able to afford it, come and see us, get engaged, that sort of thing. Um, with that one, I also do not really know. I've never really gone over that, but um, I'm sure we can get back to you on that if we ever do get a chance to go over that. Fantastic, I appreciate that. Yeah. Director Nichols. I just want to say great job. Um, it's always great seeing you folks here. Um, and thank you for choosing to serve on ASB. This is, you know, public service is a really important part. And believe it or not, what you're doing right now is public service. And I thank you for it. And I hope it's something you keep doing throughout the course of your life. Student reps, you have an opportunity to question your classmates. <laughs> um, the tough questions are out now. I didn't really have a question, just more of comments. Um, first, I just wanted to say that the five star app, I think that's a really good idea to get the word out more because there's a lot of students. I know that we get the word out a lot on like Snapchat stories and Instagram, but for the students that don't have that, I think that's smart so they can get the app and still know about all the things going on. And just wanted to say great presentation. Love seeing my fellow Bruins. You guys did amazing. Student Red Gilbertson? No? Okay. Very good job. Go Bruins. Go Bruins. They did such a great job. All right. I'm just getting the next presentation up and we have Sequoia High School. Getting, they're getting organized back there. Um, hi, I'm Marika. I'm the ASB advisor at Sequoia High School. Um, the pronouns I use are she, her. Um, I'm super proud to introduce this group of officers behind me. They've worked so hard to make such a difference in our school this year. Unfortunately, well, oh, well, our president, Mikey, couldn't make it today, um, but she's not listed up there anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves and get started. Greetings, my name is Misty. I use all pronouns and I am the freshman sophomore governor. Hi, I'm Mary Jane. I go by she, her, and I'm the advertising manager. My name's Sam, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm Sequoia High School's treasurer. Hi, my name is Sunny. I'm Sequoia's student vice president and uh, I'm very thankful for all your time here today. And um, sorry, <laughs> I'd like to present our school's ASB and budget. And thank you, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and I'm gonna hand that off to Sam. I'm gonna be talking about what our budget looked like this year and what we plan for the next year of 2023 to 2024. For our revenues uh, this year, we're mainly making it from our general student body and our clubs. Next year, we plan to spread that throughout all of our um, general student body graduating classes and clubs. You might notice that our trends are going down next year, and that's because we're going to be relying less on our district and having more self 
self-sustaining ways of making profit for our school through events. Our expenditures are similar in this way, and we plan to collaborate with our entire school to make sure that all of our areas are being compensated for and acknowledged. For a breakdown, you see that we're not only going off of our general student body, but our clubs this year. And because of how well that went, we're planning to spread that out through our general, our clubs, and our graduating class. For a fund balance, you're seeing that all the money that we're making is going back into our school. We're doing this through clubs, through theme weeks, which students can participate in, and by making our uh, yearbooks free for everybody. I will now be handing off the budget development to Misty. Hi. Um, so executives met with Marika regularly to gather information from clubs, and we thought about future goals and current realities. Then after building the budget, we met with Drew, the assistant principal, and Betsy, the office manager, to go over it. At our school, we also go by first names to bring a sense of uh, teamwork and allevi allevi excuse me, <laughs> alleviate the power dynamic. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> um. So uh, another, sorry, another way that we reduce barriers, barriers is by not having ASB cards. We also currently don't host school dances. So our main um, revenue comes from vending machines and other events that we plan. Uh, last year, we got a grant uh, uh, from a local group of $2,000, which we didn't get this year. So we had to change plans and plan a fundraiser this year. Oh. Um, thank you to our school board and superintendent for allocation to our ASB accounts. That money has helped our school grow and be a place that students want to go to. We believe that Sequoia High School should be a safe place for everyone to express themselves. We will do this by working to ensure every student has what they need. Let them know that they are loved and belong here. Uh, we've used the Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs to help guide us in our mission. And I'm gonna pass it over to Sunny to elaborate. Um. Basically, I'm going to talk about our clubs and activities and basically what we do to like make our community more of a community. And as Misty said, the I forgot the name for it, sorry, but basically our mission is to make everybody feel welcome and basically be themselves. That's our big mission, basically, as our school. But um, recently, because of COVID and things, we haven't had clubs active. So around this year, we actually just now started opening all of our clubs and reintroducing them into our school, um, which has been actually a really great success because, uh, sorry. Um, basically, we brought them all back via a Canvas page where students can select their clubs, which happen every Thursday out of our advisory advisors own free will like they volunteer to do these clubs and host them during our advisory period, which is like a 30 minute period basically where we check in with our students and stuff and make sure that they're on the right path to succeed. Um, none of the clubs really would have been possible without our ASB team and our leadership classes help along with students volunteering to be the presidents of the clubs and um basically we made sure that every club is seen and heard and any students who want to start a club just have to get a hold of a leadership or asb person and they can bring it to our attention and then we form like clubs basically out of any students need or like feel that they want to have a club, they can become the president and run the club.
And um, we've also opened up a thing where we make our own individual stickers for all of our students and their clubs, according clubs. Like they can turn in custom stickers so that they can have representation for their clubs. And uh, now I'm going to hand it off to MJ for points of pride. Sorry. Hi. Um, the students at Sequoia worked really hard putting together events like our hygiene and food drive, where we worked our best to meet kids with their needs. We created care packages and a self-service station we, during our, it was during Thanksgiving. Um, and the care package, they had all the basic hygienic supplies any kid would need. We made them gender neutral so every person got all of the same stuff regardless of anything. The self-service station basically just brought awareness to all of the food and hygienic supplies that were donated to us. We also got a very, we got a very appreciative donation from mm -hmm. a church that helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. We helped our students by addressing food waste and the meaning of best buy dates. And the students worked really hard to hold together to work really hard and run things like a waffle breakfast waffle breakfast staff pieing and we even tried to work with our goal and port gardener programs yeah. around campus doing things like a great egg hunt and our goal pro program specifically helping us on fridays with passing out popcorn to all our students um we've sp specifically We've run theme weeks throughout this whole entire year, especially to help our students feel seen and valued on our campus. We tried to make them accessible to all of our students, regardless of anything. We had things like Adam Sandler Day, where leadership class made masks for everybody to wear around school. We decorated our campus as Candyland mm -hmm. and the characters in the rooms, and we had a trick or treat, basically. We did a core line day. We had or days to access to make it easier for students who didn't have the funds or just materials to dress up on certain days. So it just made things easier. And even in the lunchroom or during breakfast, we laid out supplies for students to get ready for the day at school. So then they could feel participate. They could participate with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we even expanded our ASB by adding more roles. My job especially um we started a student council which we switch out every couple terms at sequoia it basically gets us it gives us an opportunity to hear from the students point of view around our school instead of just the group of asb that's there every single day yeah which i think was a really good Thanks. job and a really great opportunity for us and now i'm going to pass it on to sunny all right this is something more exciting um, this was actually one of our school's very first fundraisers, and we couldn't have done it without our clubs that we started this year as well. Um, basically, our, uh, some like honorable mentions of the clubs that contributed was our um, art club who handmade pottery and sold it, sustainability club who sold student grown plants, Juice Club, who sold creative handmade concessions such as like Oreos and popcorn, s'mores popcorn, all sorts of different kinds of popcorn. <laughs> but anyways, that's not really. <laughs> and um, of course, our lovely leadership class helped us. Sorry, I lost track. Helped us with making decorations for the event. It was spring themed, so we had flowers, balloons, all sorts of decorations to help lift the spirit of spring. Mm -hmm. And um, our ASB also did do a new thing where we made tiles to paint and buttons and stickers that people can customize. And they came and they painted, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we're a small school, so we did set a really small goal for how many people we thought were going to attend, and we actually exceeded it by a lot. Over 150 people showed up, and we also set a very small budget of $600 that we were hoping to make to cover a yearbook so every student can get a free yearbook, and we got over $1,400, wow. which 
we reimbursed every club that participated three hundred and fifty dollars so they can continue to yeah. you know do their thing and make maybe even a bigger spring bazaar next year or something different um now i'm going to hand it off to Sam to discuss our school's next steps. As you can tell by everybody else in this presentation, we have a lot to celebrate this year. Mm -hmm. And as underclassmen, we hope to continue that next year as well as making our school even more participatory, set higher goals and bring Sequoia to hopefully participate more in our Everett community so we get more well known. If you have any questions, please ask them now. Very well, Sam. Directors, you have questions? Yes, Director Nichols. All right. Well, first of all, uh, as is the requisite, thank you so much for being here and putting together this presentation. Um, I'll say, you can call me Andrew. Uh, my pronouns <laughs> are he, him. Okay. Um, I would love to know more about your crafty squirrels and maker space. Yeah. So, yes. As uh, I've got my question. Our <laughs> students talked about we have clubs and interest group groups. Our clubs are things that meet outside of our advisory period. So, like you saw, sustainability club and such. Um, we actually have interest groups that are hosted every Thursday, though. And these are what you're hearing our maker space, our crafty squirrels. <laughs> um, Crafty Squirrels has actually been really popular with our students. Um, one of our staff members, Nancy, brings in a bunch of supplies and kids can make stuff like beaded bracelets. They can make cards for people like Mother's Day was coming up or for people that they appreciate. And in the maker space, we work with um, Marika and one of our other teachers, <laughs> Dylan, to um, one of our most recent projects was um, making a what is it? Um, basically, we made like we got all the students together that joined Makerspace, and we made. Are you talking about the sign? Yeah. Okay, we made <laughs> every student in the class got a small tile, and we built our own basically sequoia sign. And each student participated, whether it was painting, whether it was like ripping apart pieces of magazines to like collage a colorful tile that's basically all sorts of creativity and they made a whole sign that says sequoia high school with like a tree in the background and oh. that's just like one of the small things that we've done to decorate our school and make it community that sounds amazing um and i just want to take one last opportunity to say thank you to each of you for choosing sequoia for engaging um and I can, I'm sure I can speak to the board and say that I'm glad that each and every one of you are here today and, and working with us. So thank you very much. Director Herman, you have your hand up. Um, again, thank you. Uh, I had stopped by the Spring Bazaar last week. I have my plants. I tried out the s'mores popcorn. Well done on that. <laughs> um, so just a just to thank you. I, I'd love. Uh, first of all, it just it has a great feel. I hope you do continue that event. Um, and thank you for partnering with Port Gardner and Goal there, and really making that campus. Um, it just had a really nice community feel stepping onto there. And so I know you had a, a big part in that. So I would just say, yeah hats off to you and i hope you continue the vision that you have for this so thank you director mason i'm just going to follow on that theme um i have seen more in this presentation um that you have brought to your community um, than i have in a long time of course it has been COVID, but um <laughs> having been on the board for 10 years i don't think i've ever seen four people from sequoia working so closely together and standing here in front of us so i just so appreciate the efforts that you're making because it is a huge impact to your school um, i love the interest groups um clubs and the fact that you're really pouring money back into take caring uh, to take care of your fellow students. It's very um, obvious. So thank you for um, what you're doing for them as well. And then lastly, I just have a, a little recommendation. I noticed your fund balance is fairly high compared to um, how big your budget is. And so there might be a little bit of opportunity to squeeze a little money out of that next year if you 
have an, an event or a need or something, um, it could certainly go a little bit lower. So thank you. And perhaps you have questions and comments. Uh, just a comment. I just wanted to say I really appreciate how inclusive you guys are and how accepting you are at your school, all the things that you're doing and giving the money back, like Director Mason said, to your clubs after the Spring Bazaar. That's really amazing how accepting you guys are and thank you for the great presentation. Student Rep. Gilbertson. I was gonna say the similar thing on the giving back to the clubs and like congratulations on being able to raise more than you guys expected. Like that's amazing to hear. That's my gosh, everybody had said something that I was going to say. <laughs> Congratulations on your presentation. I really, really, really enjoyed it. What I really like is that your ASB uh, is paying for all the yearbooks for every student. That was That's wonderful because no student should leave campus with memories that they've had before and because they can't afford it. You know, that should not be the case. And so I'm so grateful that you guys are continuing to work on that free ASB um, yearbooks for everybody. Yeah. So that's great. I have a couple questions, and I guess Director Nichols opened the door <laughs> by the maker spaces. What do you think you need to do to continue that focus on building creativity within the schools? um you know community so that every kid is involved in that space uh well it's not hard because a lot of our school a lot of the students at our schools are very creative um we have over 30 students in that club which is really impressive because we only have about 20 or about 10 students for each class each cl you're right mm -hmm. um so we see an advisory uh students are once uh, every few weeks, we actually have team building activities inside of our advisories for all of our uh -huh. students to participate in, yes. whether they're in clubs or not, because that's during um, one of our mandatory class times. Ah, very good, very good. Good focus, good focus on that. And I saw the other thing is uh, the student council, you've opened it up to other members of the community, so you know, student community, so you can hear different voices. How is that working? How do, and how do you do that? So um, our student council is actually done very randomly. Marika walks <laughs> through during um, lunch and kids just put their hand into a tub and pull out. So, and if they get, uh, I think it's, it's a- It's a silver ball, yeah. That you have a silver ball that you pull out, you're suddenly on our student council. So that makes it that all of <laughs> <laughs> any students can be on our student council. And uh, we just have, meetings every once in a while for everybody to participate, to give ideas, to collaborate with other students and continue to have ideas uh, throughout the school year. Fantastic, I like that. Because in such a small community, it's important that you hear everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you're very inclusive, but that you hear what they have to say. And by doing it that way, there's no way that you can get out of it. Exactly. <laughs> you, know? you can't get out of it. If you're selected or you put your hand in the box and you got it, you, you're in it. So thank you. You did an outstanding job. Really appreciate it. And thank you for serving because that's you. important. Thank you, Sequoia. You did excellent. Right. Next up, we have Everett High School's presentation. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Megan Adams, and I'm one of the co ASB advisors at Everett High. And uh, we are joined here in the audience with Shantina Pope, our brand new ASB bookkeeper, who it's a tough job. Um, and it's her first year in it. She's done such an amazing job, and we're so grateful to have her. And then, of course, Eric Jennings, who is our assistant principal, but also has carried us through the last several years. So we're very grateful for both of them. Um, and finally, I'm going to introduce my co-advisor, Lizzie Scott. Hi, I'm Lizzie Scott. I'm the other half of ASB at Everett with the wonderful Meg Adams. And we want to introduce our students tonight. We have our outgoing ASB president, McKenna Lynn. We have our incoming president, Avery Thompson. And we have our outgoing and incoming ASB treasurer, <laughs> Shannon Chang. She likes us enough to stay around another year. It's pretty cool. So we're excited. All right, 
Hi, thank you for having us today. We are extremely excited to be here. Uh, we are going to be presenting the Everett High School ASB budget proposal for the 2023-24 school year. Uh, again, like Ms. Scott said, my name is McKenna Lim. I am the outgoing ASB president and I am joined by Avery Thompson, my current VP and incoming ASB president, and of course, Shannon Chang, our incoming and outgoing ASB treasurer. Okay, so as an overview, today we're going to discuss our planned ASB budget for the 23-24 school year, which includes our revenues, expenditures, and the revenue expenditure breakdowns, and finally, the fund balance comparison. Next, we will go over our budget development, which consists of the ASB budget process, as well as how we decided on revenue distribution. And finally, our favorite part, the ASB snapshot, which will go over um, some details from major events we have put on this year that have bettered our students' high school experiences, and we'll end with suggestions for the future, along with any questions. So starting with our ASB budget, we have revenues, expenditures, and their respective percentage breakdowns, and then finally, a fund balance comparison. So starting with our revenues, the beginning fund balance is the leftover amount from previous year plus the total revenues, and that equals the total available funds for the following year, which can be seen in the bottom row. The total revenues for each category are found by finding the sum of the numbers in the given bank account group. For example, all athletics, girls, boys, and co-ed revenues are totaled up to equal the final athletic budget, and then all of those categories are summed up to equal the total revenue. An intentional budget choice that we have made in the recent two years that is visible here is the projected evenness of the athletic and the club revenues. As you can see in the 21 to 22 school year, the athletic revenue was 43% and the club revenue was 25%, which is almost a nearly 20% difference. But in the 22 to 23 school year, the revenues of the athletics and the clubs is more evenly distributed, and this goes for the 23 to 24 school year as well. This evenness was done between clubs and athletics to better represent the interests of our student body. And now moving on to our expenditures. Again, the total available resources is the revenue of the year plus the beginning fund balance, as mentioned in the last slide. The total expenditures for each category are again found by totaling up the numbers in their given bank account group. Totaling up those totals leads to the total expenditures. And the total available resources minus total expenditures equals the total ending balance for the year, which can be seen in the bottom row. For the 23 to 24 school year, we project that sports teams and clubs will be traveling much more frequently than previous years, especially for competitions. They will also be taking entire teams and other to state as well as other competitions instead of just a couple of their members. As you can see, the projected ending fund balance is an increase from 22 to 23 to 23 to 24. It is more similar to what it was in 21 to 22. This is because we are encouraging our clubs and activities to fundraise during the year to ensure that they have enough funds and high enough spending capacity to account for House Bill 1660 as well as other losses of revenue. Thank you, Shannon. This shows what Shannon just mentioned are expected revenues, but visually. So we have our pie chart here. Um, we made all of this based on the allocation request forms that we got from all of the clubs and the sports. As you can see in the gold, we have the general student body. And then respectively in the light blue and dark blue, we have clubs and athletics at 36 and 38%, which again, like Shannon mentioned, are extremely close in numerical value. On this next slide, we have the pie chart for our expenditures. So as you can see, we have, again, our clubs at 36% and our athletics at 39%. And this is because we want to accurately represent the interests of our student body. In addition, you can probably tell that the pie chart looks extremely similar to the last slide. <laughs> that is because we are encouraging money to be spent as it is earned on the same students that have earned it. And now moving on to the fund balance comparison, we'll be comparing the 21 to 22 school year to this year's school year, the 22 to 23 school year, and finally next year, the 23 to 24 school year. So to begin, the 21 to 22 school year's actual amounts are your 21 to 22 year end amounts from the actual financial summary, which can be found on our school's website as well. Um, for this year, the 22 to 23 school year, the estimated actual amounts, as you can see, 
are your 22 to 23 budgeted beginning balances. <coughs> For the following year, 23 to 24, the budgeted amounts are your 23 to 24 budgeted ending balances. And each category has its own ending balance. And the total of those is the ending fund balance, as you can see in the bottom row. You can see in the coming year that the projected ending fund balance is considerably higher than this year's. This is because, as Shannon previously mentioned, we expect to have more fundraising from groups next year, and we're going to, we are going to focus on encouraging that fundraising, fundraising by helping advisors and coaches individually, but also by helping entire groups to look for more on and off campus fundraising. And again, we are looking to encourage these groups to fundraise to offset the effects of House Bill 1660 and other losses of revenue. So here, guys, not bad. <laughs> so we've talked about what the numbers mean, and now we will discuss how the decisions for those numbers were made under our budget development, which consists of the ASP budget process, along with revenue distribution and an equitable allocation of funds. So to begin with the ASP budget process, um, our ASP team met on multiple days um, to discuss how we would distribute the money. And we asked questions such as, how many students does each group serve? What is each group's ability to fundraise? How does each group contribute to our school, school culture? Are they active? And do they need a helping hand to get off the ground? Additionally, we looked at each group, if each group had a strong outside ASB account, such as a parent or booster group. Um, and after answering each of these questions, it helps us to move forward to a fair decision and to, to each group's unique situation when making our budgeting process. So going over our revenue distribution, I'll be going more into depth about our ASB and ID cards. In 22 to 23, we have sold 732 ASB cards, 267 at full price at $45, and 465 for free for a total of $12,044 in, $12, so far. In 23 to 24, we will be more transparent about what specific benefits an ASB card provides for students, such as increasing relationships with businesses in the area for student discounts and also discounts for school events. We want every student to have an ASB card as it creates equitable opportunities and promotes school involvement. We also plan to recruit a teacher team to train and track ASB card membership along with our ASB advisors. We will also be using CHAMPS, our advisory period, to educate all of our students about the benefits of having an ASB card. All right, so after we considered the questions that Avery previously mentioned, we went on to consider ASB law. So we went into CARS, which stands for Cultural, Athletic, Recreational, and Social, and considered which things they were requesting and if they fit under CARS. So after considering all of that, we took a look at what they requested. And as you can see, that's me crossing things off. Um, <laughs> we were deciding whether um, you know, we could afford certain things or what was more important uh, to support our student body accurately. We also considered special requests that may be coming up through the school year, such as uh, this year we had our MLK assembly and our Black Student Union reached out to us and was like, hey, we need some extra funds. And because we thought about it and realized that this runs under the cultural aspect of CARS and because it is an event that um, supports the entire school, we decided to help fund that activity. So now we are moving on to our ASP snapshot, the best part. All right, let's see what we've got. All right, so basically we have what we call our why at Everett High School, and that is to provide access. So we always want to make sure that we are providing high quality, frequent and accessible activities for every single person at our school. So first up, we have our major fundraising events. Uh, first on the list, we have our blue and gold auction, which we are extremely grateful to have a huge supportive alumni community here at Everett. And they come together annually every year and support our clubs, sports, and other groups that want to participate in the auction. As well as we have our most attended event of the year, which is our homecoming events, tailgate and the dance. ASB is able to bring in funds from the dance tickets that are sold. And then all of our school groups have the opportunity to sell food or any other goods that they wish at our tailgate, which is what raises funds for their own individual group. 
And on the top right, as Shannon previously mentioned, we made a point to really get ASB cards, every single person at our school an ASB card. And uh, we did increase our sales by 20%. And not only did that increase the funds that we were able to bring in, but more importantly, it made 20% more of our student body able to be have more access to our activities. So now highlighting our club events and activities, starting with the top left, this is Avid selling concessions at a sports game, specifically a basketball game, and this is significant because it's the first time that we've had that concession stand open in four years, closed because of COVID, you know, and at Everett High, we open it up to old clubs and sports as an opportunity to raise money for themselves. Below that, we have Drama Thespian Society and also Educators Educators riding, Rising in the top right, they're competing at state and they're also both moving on to nationals. Another group that we had that competed at state was DECA, which is the bottom left. In the top middle, we have a picture of our auxiliary gym open during homecoming, which we fill with a lot of games and activities so that all students can engage with others and have fun in more accessible ways, not just through dancing. Below that, we have our Bibliophile Society hosting their read-in storytime event, and this is an example of how clubs at our school feel empowered to plan and host their own events that are open to the whole school community. Again, starting with the top left, we have our Makerspace Club, and this club is a core part of our Everett High School community located in the library. It's a very open club for all students, and it's focused on allowing anyone to have a creative outlet. During Care Week, which is a spirit week before finals at our school, Makerspace helped the whole school by providing materials for our Worry Monster Craft, which was an activity open during both lunches for the whole school to for students to decorate a box where you can write about your worries since students might have been stressed because of finals. And you're gonna see an example of one, what one looks like in the bottom left. Between the top and bottom left, Drama Thespian Society is performing A Wrinkle in Time, which was, which was a huge success for both students um, performing and also for the people that are watching. It was just a super great show. And then we have Bruegel Fest, which is the top middle. And I would say this is one of the most anticipated sporting events of the year for both Everett and Cascade, since it unites the whole Everett community. And everyone always has a lot of fun watching the games and cheering for their friends. To the right of that, we have Rock, Paper, Scissors. And this is a day, it's usually a Friday, and it's an easy accessible event that our leadership hosts where every student can participate simply by playing rock, paper, scissors. And if they win, they, they take um, the person that they were playing against, their beads, and then they can advance. And this is really great because everyone can participate and anyone can advance. Below that, we have our Senior Citizen Dance, which is hosted by National Honor Society. And it's a way for them to give back to our senior community since it is so strong here at Everett. Thank you, Shannon. Um, moving on to our community service events. Here at Everett High School, we focus on having strong community service events that not only focus on a distribution of revenue to our community, but also providing quality events to our community. First, on our top right, we have our food drive. Our leadership students work so extremely hard to rally the Everett community to open their cupboards and put cans in various donation boxes. This year, we were able to gather large amounts of food from the community to give to the Volunteers of America, and we're so proud to be able to provide that to our community. Additionally, in the bottom right, we have Latinos Unidos, one of our strongest, most active clubs at our school. They hold their annual Regala Rush fundraiser, which is a toy drive, and they give gifts to families in need during the holiday season. Something that we think is really cool is that they always have more people willing to donate to those families and families that are signing up to receive gifts. And this year, Latinos Nidos was able to support a total of 101 Everett families. On the top left, we have our Winter Wonderland event, which fits into um, strong quality experiences for our community. And this is when all of the A building gets lit up um, by lights. And this is run by our leadership students, um, lights and blow ups. And these blow ups and lights are provided by our community, but mostly by our amazing staff at Everett High School. We're so lucky to have them. Um, community members and children get to come and enjoy the beauty with us and leave with candy canes, hot cocoa, and cotton candy. And additionally, in the bottom middle, is our choir is pictured. Um, every single year during Winter Wonderland, they get to come and sing carols, and we all get to listen to their beautiful voices. This is a great way for us to highlight one of our arts groups um, in a fun, non-concert way. Additionally, in the bottom left, we have Trunk or Treat, and pictured as Knowledgeable Club. 
Uh, Trunk or Treat is a great way where we combine lots of club fun as well as community involvement. And we think it's one of our best events because clubs and sports alike get to dress up and be crazy, but also any community members can come and grab some candy and dress up with us. And it's a great way to have fun with the entire community. Additionally, in the top middle is our ASB team pictured at the Angel of the Winds Day for teachers. And we just went to show our support to all the amazing staff throughout the district, and we really appreciate them. All right, now we're moving on to our points of pride. So first up, we have our C of E photo pictured in the top left. We took this photo on the first day of school, and it was sort of just a kickoff of like, representing every single individual in our EHS community and it's just one photo that shows you know everyone in one one shot. We've got our uh, top right photo which is from our club fair that we hosted this October. It was able to we were able to set up tables for every single club that was willing and they were able to hand out information to students and provide all that information to freshmen, new students, or people who just didn't know we had those groups at our school. And so this was a huge uh, morale building, especially for our club, since they aren't nearly recognized as much. In addition to the left, we have our TSA STEAM competitors, and they got third in their solar sprint competition in state, and that will be sending them to nationals here in the next month. So that is very exciting. We're very proud of them. And to the right of that, we have our robotics team, the Cast Iron Orcas, and they made us very proud on multiple occasions at all their robotics events. And on the bottom left, we have the alma mater that is being sung after a boys basketball game. This is something that we passed last year to be more gender inclusive, and this was the first year that we got to sing it with the new more inclusive wording. And to the right of that, we have the MLK assembly that I mentioned earlier, and the PI club was able to perform and it is their it was their first big showcase after their recharter this school year, and it provides an extremely welcoming space for all the Pacific Islander groups at our school. <coughs> We've got another page of points pride. Mm -hmm. On the top left, we are proud to say that this is picturing a state send off with both athletics and things such as art. So we have pictured in that photo our wrestlers and our artists. On the top, on the bottom left, you can see Jayla and Selena. They are our AP art national medalists and they will be going to new york city to receive their medals here in the next month which we are extremely proud of them and in the middle left we have our all of our fans that we were able to send to the tacoma dome to support our girls basketball team we were able to fill four buses full of students at no cost to the students at all and they all got to go and support our girls basketball team in their state competition and that was a huge morale building activity for us because anyone was able to go and just support our girls basketball team. To the right of that, we have our Humans of EHS Instagram page, which is something that we love to keep bringing back because we believe that it shows all of the diverse different people at our school and it just gets to showcase everyone's different special story. And so that is something that we really pride ourselves in. When reflecting on the past couple of years, we have laid the foundational groundwork to make to create a more inclusive community at our school where every kid is proud to be a seagull and proud to go to Everett High. We've had success in running the student council and changing the wording in the alma mater to be more inclusive and this change has been present this year during sports events and more. When thinking about this future year, we want to use our positions on ASB to celebrate diversity of Everett High School and what makes it such a great place. We have a new ASB position called Recognition and Promotion Commissioner, and the goal of this ASB position is to better recognize student achievement in all areas and at all levels, and also to promote student recognition so that recognition is more common overall throughout all, all of our student body. ASB is always aspiring to create events and activities that are accessible to all, high quality, and frequent enough throughout the year to maintain the culture of Everett High School pride. Thank you. <laughs>
And now moving on to any questions. Directors, here's an opportunity to make comments and ask questions. Who would like to start here? And I, yes. I, yeah. I, um, well done. Well done. Yeah. Uh, so much there to celebrate. It was it was fantastic to hear. Uh, I love how at Everett there's so much community involvement, the senior dance, the food drives, um, which is just fantastic. I think you had gotten to the end. One of the questions I had is, uh, what what forms of communication do you all use to make sure students are engaged? Because I saw Instagram mentioned in there. So um, yeah, we have our student. Um, ASB representative for PR, Lily Danielson. She's so fantastic. She runs, she primarily runs, but the rest of the ASB team helps her out with the Beak News, which is our Instagram page. We also have daily announcements run by ASB, um, but also other groups can come in and help with the announcements if they would like to. Um, and also Shannon would like to add, yeah. I do want to say that a lot of our clubs at our school have their own Instagram pages that are run by their own representatives. And I think that this is a really great way for each club to reach out to their own kind of members. And yeah, there's just like a, we min mostly use Instagram. Oh, and I have another one. We also have our student council meetings. Um, so every single person at our student council meeting is either um, an officer of a club, a captain of a sport, or they are the representative from their second period class. And so somehow, some way, every single person in our school gets communicated these things. And so like if you're the representative of your second period class, you go back to class, tell everyone about the activities that are happening. And so that's sort of how we get all the angles, all the information out. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It was really, really great presentation and clearly a lot going on at every high. So well done. <laughs> Director Nichols. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you guys practice. So yeah, you guys <laughs> did. it was a really smooth presentation. Um, I was wondering if you could um, clarify for me on your revenues breakdown. Um, you show a really large increase in dances in the yearbook projected revenue. Um, and I was just wondering where those projections were coming from. I think the main reason that the projected increase is, you know, obviously so different is I think because like of COVID, we haven't had a lot of like engagement with our dances. And I think that like as our school becomes more like community focused and people are like branching out and like reaching new people, meeting new people. I think that dances have become a lot more like common and a lot more tickets have been bought. People are more like engaged. And also, like I mentioned before, with like our auxiliary gym, like having different activities for people, not just dancing. I think that this makes our dances more like appealing to people, old people um, that go to our school. And I think that this is probably one of the reasons why we project our dance tickets to be, you know, at a higher, high revenue. <laughs> What about your yearbook sales? Honestly, I personally do not have an answer to that question, okay. but I would love to get back to you or if you reached out to me. Yeah, no, that's, it is just, you know, it's a significant increase. And so I was like, oh, are, are, traditionally, are we underselling yearbooks? Um, but, uh, and then, um, no, I think that was it. I think that's all I had. I, you know, fantastic presentation. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, great, great presentation. Um, you said something during your presentation that really I appreciated um, money spent on the students who earn it. And I really appreciate how you have balanced out your budget so that um, those that are working hard to raise the money are also benefiting from that. Um, and then just so many pages of celebrations and activities. <laughs> and I, I, I just went on and on, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, I love your your new position also that you have um, added to ASB, um, which I think will probably help a lot with um, uh, recognition throughout the school and, and the folks who certainly deserve it. There is a lot to um, recognize at Everett High right now. So thank you for a great presentation. Student Rep. Colley. Um, just a couple comments. Um, I think it's really great that you guys are able to help clubs look for ways to fundraise instead of just letting them out on their own <laughs> and saying make up your own money. So it's really good that you are able to help them find the club or find the places to make up the money. And it's also really amazing that you can ha everyone has a chance to sell at the tailgates. So all the clubs can raise money and it's not just like one club singled out. So thank you. Your presentation was great. Um, I love to see our community being brought back after COVID through all these different 
events going on and the club fair that happened I think was a really great opportunity for everyone to see what's going on at our school and I'm really glad you guys put that together. I have a couple of questions and I'm going to piggyback off of what Director Nichols had asked about the yearbook. My question is um, you increased the participant participation within the student body for getting ASB cards, which is wonderful. Because as you mentioned before, the ASB card helps, um, you know, reduce the cost for certain activities, gives you the re uh, revenue that you need in order to do those activities and support the clubs. But my question is, uh, and you did mention House Bill 1660, what do you do for students who, you know, are right in between the free and reduced and uh, being able to afford the ASB cards because $45 is quite a bit of money yeah. for some kids to be able to put forward for an ASB card. Yeah, so we have um, like students typically uh, fill out some sort of form. Um, our wonderful treasurer, Miss Pope, um, is incredible with that stuff and she uh, finds she finds money somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, she, <laughs> she's, yeah, she's. Uh, <laughs> she needs to find me some money. <laughs> yeah, she's. Um, she's really incredible. And when students come with a need or some sort of, you know, like I can't really afford this, but I don't qualify for free and reduced lunch. Usually, there's some sort of grant. I thank you. And and you also mentioned, and I think Director Nichols mentioned this, the yearbook costs. Um, it's it's very difficult for some kids to be able to leave campus with so many memories of schools uh, behind them without a yearbook. How much are the yearbooks and how much do they cost? And what's the difference between last year and this year that caused that increase to go up? Our yearbooks are $65. And I think that already when listening to like our yearbook club, I know that they don't make much of a profit. They're kind of just trying to break even. Um, as for, I think, why the um, increase in yearbook uh, revenue, I think it's because we do charge a lot for um, like senior pages in the yearbook, which are like, you know, like a full page, or like half a page. And these are usually usually like um, gifts that like grandparents buy for their seniors who are graduating as like a way to highlight them in the yearbook. Um, I think those have become more popular. So that's kind of one of the reasons why um, the revenue has increased. Thank you very much for that. And I did, I, I heard something that I thought was very fantastic. You had mentioned in developing clubs on campus that you're willing to provide a helping hand to get them off of the ground. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? And how do you engage student leadership to support the clubs that are just starting so that they can be very energetic and be involving um well similar to how we have our new position this year of asb recognition um, and promotion off commissioner last year we introduced a new um, officer named our club commissioner um, and this was a really great way after um covid to have someone to really be um, kind of the facilitator between asb and leadership and all the individual clubs so always reaching out getting club minutes especially new clubs we had a, num a numerous amount of clubs um, that were new that were um, or rechartered through our student council so voting to bring those clubs back or clubs that just haven't been super active um, and i think that asb really works hard especially through our advisors and other people to communicate with club advisors but also with asb going to not necessarily directly going to club meetings but but communicating with club officers um, and discussing how they're doing yeah. how they're doing yeah um, so I actually started up a club last year, and um, it's called La Mesa. And if you um, basically, if you're anyone at our school who wants to start practicing your Spanish, you come and you hang out and you eat candy and you speak Spanish, and it's pretty fun. Um, so we actually this fall for the tailgate, we were like, oh yeah, we want to do something, and we were like, we just created this club and we have no money, and so uh, we had there we have a form that any club can fill out to request money from ASB. And it's basically just like an agreement, like, hey, this is to get us started. And then after, once we build the money back up, we, you know, we pay them back. And it's just sort of a little helping hand. Thank you very much. What a great way to 
uh, do school in involvement and spirit build school spirit that's fantastic I really appreciate it. your presentation was excellent your snapshots and in a school pride was wonderful I mean director Mason said it the pages just kept on going <laughs> and that was fantastic and I really appreciate that thank you so much for what you do and your leadership on campus thank you so thank much. you All right, and lastly, we will have Jackson High School. Oh. I'm not. Can you help me? Did I not? It's not escaping. It's just not escaping that one. <laughs> Where's the board meeting today? It's down there. I did this well for all the other did, wins. You were doing so great. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Is it shared though? I don't think it's shared. It's not shared. Okay, new share. There we go. Oh, you stopped sharing. Is it, there you go. Is it shared? Mm hmm. No. Am I good? Is it good? Okay. Okay. No. Okay. No. 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 Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if I stopped sharing the other one. I did. From back there. Okay. So now let's go. Jackson. This is the big wrecking part. Getting the, the presentation up. <laughs> There you go. We good? Ready to go. Ready to go. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Gaddick. I am the ASB advisor and activities coordinator at Jackson High School. Before I get to introducing the kids, I do just want to extend my gratitude uh, to our school board and also to our district leadership for all of your support for everything ASB athletics and activities. Uh, it's an integral part of our school's culture, climate, and community. Uh, and also, uh, in the spirit of Mental Health Awareness Month, um, it's probably the most mentally healthy thing our students can do in our schools. So I thank you sincerely for all of your support for all that we do. Um, we have four names. We only have three. It seems to be almost a trend that the presidents seem to be missing tonight. I'm sure that whatever they said they're doing, they're probably just actually all together spending time. Um, our president, Sophie, is supposedly on the golf course competing uh, in ah. early postseason. Um, not that any of us on a day like this would want to be on the golf course. Um, so she's not here, but I do have our current vice president and our incoming president, Joey Kim, our current treasurer, Colton Anderson, and our incoming treasurer, Eugene Kim. So, floor yours. Get him. All right, so today in our presentation, we'll be going over our projected budget for the 2023 to 2024 school year as well as the process that we used when developing our budget. And we'll also briefly present a snapshot of our most successful events and projects that ASB put together this past year, as well as what we look forward to continuing next year. And we'll open the floor to, the, to questions after. So starting us off, I'll be taking you guys through our revenues, expenditures, the breakdowns of both of these, and then also our fund balance comparisons. Um, the main difference that you can see when you're looking at our revenues for next year compared to this year and the previous years is that our clubs account is increasing its budget by a lot. And currently we have around 70 clubs, 10 of them, around 10 we've approved this year. And this has helped to contribute to our increase in the revenue in clubs. In addition to this, some of our more competitive clubs, such as band, choir, and DECA, we've asked them to increase their um, budget capacity due to the different like state and national competitions they're competing in. We've had some of these clubs come into ASB in the mornings and request, um, they're requesting funds from us in order for them to go on these competitions. And we wanted to make sure that when they come in next year, hopefully, um, we'll be able to have the capacity to give them the money so they can go on these trips. Looking at our expenditure slides, we follow pretty much the same trend with our clubs taking up nearly 60% of our expenditures budget. 
and this is a big increase from last year. This is because the money that we have our clubs bringing in this year, we want them to make sure that they're spending them back out onto the students in their clubs. Yeah. And looking at our revenues, you can see that clubs makes up about 60% of our revenue and a little bit more for our expenditures. Moving on to our fund balance comparisons, the main thing that we're focusing on here is our ending fund balance. And as you can see, over the last three years, it's been pretty much the same amount. And this is, we found this to be our sweet spot of around 25% of our operating budget, where we're able to spend most of the money that we're making, we're just able to spend it right back on our students. And now I'll be go over, going over the budget development process and basically what we do with all of these clubs. So for things, first things first, it's the ASB process. So basically we get all of our information from like the clubs, all of their like, we get, we basically asked for them to create like some sort of master calendar, like say all the events that they did this year. And then some of the events and fundraisers that we can expect from them to do next year as well. And then once we get all of that information, we, the executive board will come and then we'll clarify all of these submissions that they give us, all of the events, we'll like validate all of them and then we'll um, revise them if we need to. And then after like everything seemed okay and um, the funds seem reasonable and all of that, the budget is then approved by the assistant principals and then the ASB secretary is then notified and then we'll, t we'll then notify the clubs saying that their plan is accepted and yeah. So this is the budget development and revenue distribution. One of the key ideas we could take, key points to take away from this is definitely going to be the ASB and ID cards where it's only a $5,000 decrease, but actually um, it's, um, a lot of, because of the House Bill 1660 Act, a lot of um, the people who are like, um, who are like, sorry, um, yeah, so um, ASB and ID cards, they're, they have been at a record high this year compared to any other year, at being at like around 70%. And because a lot of the students who bought these ASB cards this year consist of the people who did not actually like sign up for the House Bill 1660 Act, we can expect this number to actually go down because um, we want to be able to help the people who are free and no, not free and reduced, but help yes. the people who need the House Bill 1660 Act. And we want to be able to give them that privilege to get their free ASB and ID cards. And yeah. Um, next up, we can see the revenue distribution for the clubs. And basically for this one, uh, clubs will contact our ASB secretary to like schedule a meeting for like their general reserve transfer proposal and like it to like get all the things that they need. And then once the clubs come, they do their presentation similar to like this, except less intense. And then the ASP will then look at like the budget. And then with all of that information we get, we will collaboratively decide whether we want to approve or decline this. And if we want to make edits to the proposal, we will be sure to contact those clubs and ask for like adjustments of sort. And then, yeah, once we then come to like a comfortable decision of accepting it, the decision is then reported to the ASP treasurer and the ASP secretary. All right, so now we're going to dive into some of our major events and projects that we were able to complete this year as ASB, as well as what we're hoping to amplify even further in coming years. So starting off with our major fundraising events, we had a very successful haunted homecoming, which took place on the weekend of Halloween. Oop, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, we also had a lot of our class ASB groups host community-centered fundraisers this year, like our volleyball tournament, which happened in March, as well as our Tolo spring dance and a painting night for families and students. We also saw lots of great involvement from our clubs this year, um, especially in helping put on our ASB events. So for instance, we had Black Culture Night and Multicultural Night being led by a lot of our cultural clubs, um, which generated a lot of student participation. 
and attendance. And we also had Oktoberfest, which is our annual major Halloween event for our local community and especially for our elementary students in the neighboring area. For instance, we had HOSA, which is one of our clubs that are focused on future health professionals. They had a booth that was kind of like a mock operation table where the elementary students could kind of perform a surgery to get candy out of the operating table. <laughs> Um, we were also able to make a very valuable impact on our community this year, especially through drives. And so we had a very successful toy drive where we collected nearly 8,000 toys for our neighboring elementary schools. And we also had an amazing food drive where we partnered with feeder elementary schools to fill truckloads of food to donate to our community. And through these projects, we realized the importance of a collective effort, not just between our students at Jackson, but working with the schools around us and the students who are outside of Jackson, but still part of our district in order to kind of make a more general impact on the entire community. So diving into our points of pride, we saw lots of great school spirit this year. Um, there was increased excitement, especially coming back from the pandemic. We saw lots of good spirit at our sports games and spirit weeks. And one of our most successful spirit days was our Hoko Coco at JHS Spirit Day, which took place during our homecoming spirit week. And this was a day where students could come to school in their PJs and we handed out free hot chocolate in the morning. And yeah, we really saw lots of great student involvement, especially through our first lip dub in over six years, which we just had last week. And we actually had Superintendent Saltzman and one of our board members make an appearance. So make sure to check that video out on our Jackson YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, that, that lip dub video really generated lots of school spirit and all students were involved in that video. So when we reflect on our work this past year, we realize the importance of doing the smaller things to bring our school community together. So for instance, we recognized that a lot of our school hallways kind of seemed empty and could use some color. So we decided to make fun encouragement posters and eventually made a positivity hallway, as you can see on the slide, which generated lots of good student feedback and uh, was just it was a small way of us showing that each student mattered um, through the use of cute phrases and encouragement. Um, we also are trying to continue to uphold the value of giving more than we ask from our students, especially in the coming year. And we want to do this, especially through the smaller things like handing out hot chocolate in the mornings, um, brightening the school environment through posters. And also this past year, we were also able to bring in therapy dogs during finals week, which a lot of our students loved. And so we're hoping to continue those things to make Jackson a place where students are happy to be. Thank you for listening to our budget presentation. Do you have any questions for us? Yes, indeed. Director Mason. Thank you. That's a great Thank presentation. Um, I just love how they're all different. And um, each school is doing so many cool things, like this positivity um, hallway is just such a fun idea. Um, I had a question. How many clubs do you have at your school? Um, we currently have around 70 clubs. And this year, well, at the beginning of this year, we went through and we kind of removed some of the inactive clubs when we were going through our budget. But throughout the year, we were able to add probably about 10 new ones. That is just amazing. That's really great. And what's your largest club? Do you know? Or some of them? Key Club is probably one of our largest clubs. They do um, a lot of the volunteering just around, like around Mill Creek. And they also, they do a lot of volunteering at our events. Like when we have homecoming and Tolo, they come, they help set up for our um, Oktoberfest tailgate. They came and they set up a bunch of booths. They donated a whole bunch of candy. So they contribute a lot to our school. That's great. Uh, and, and again, it's fun to see the diversity in the different presentations and clearly clubs is a big 
focusing your school, getting everyone involved. So that's wonderful. I had a question about dances. I noticed that you decreased that budget by about 50%. Um, what was the reason for that next yeah, year? So um, similar to Cascade's presentation, when they talked about how like homecoming, I mean, or all of their dancers were gonna be canceled. It's kind of like the same for us as well. Like homecoming will be the only dance we have, unfortunately, because um, some of our other dances, they just, they didn't work out to be so well, so we're going to cancel all of those except homecoming and then that's going to be basically like our only source for dances okay which is why there's like a huge drop yeah okay well thank you um and also just a couple of comments um i think that some of your community service projects should be your points of pride also i don't know why they're called one or the other because they are you should be very proud of what you're doing in your community and um i did see your lip up it was great. Thanks. <laughs> Director, Director Herman, you have another question? Um, or well, comment? Yeah, more comments. And well done on that. It's um, the importance of everything you're doing is just so clear to as we're talking about student mental health and being engaged and involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was also impressed. I really appreciate the, the description of the budget development process. And I'm imagining that master calendar when all the clubs are turning in their plans yeah. for the year. That must be a pretty exciting time. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of clubs to um, uh, to sort of help out and uh, nudge, nudge along with that. Do you have to give many, um, I guess, just uh, changes to their plans when they do submit those? Or is it pretty much, what's that I mean like? It's a lot of clubs, so like we have to look through. <laughs> so looking through all of them is, I mean, I guess we, we do look at every single one, but like if there's something like really, really off or abnormal, then we'll of course, we'll like contact them about it. But usually our clubs do pretty well, even though there's like a whole ton, they do pretty good independently. So we just, we trust in what they're doing and then they do execute well. Thank you. And also just the, the 10 new clubs. I always think that's pretty fantastic when students are coming up with ideas, especially after after sort of COVID and coming back. And um, so it is fun to see those on on the budget online. So thank you. Well done. Director Nichols. Thanks for driving all the way up north. Uh, we appreciate I, I don't get a chance to get down to Jackson very often. Um, so it's always great when when you folks are able to come up here and, and present to us. Um, my question is about your fund balance. So you were saying that your fund balance is currently about 25% of your operating budget. Yes, so um, it makes up I think it was around 250,000 every year and our like overall ASB budget is I think it's around a million. I'm not positive. Yeah, around a million. Um, have you f considered any sort of spend down to kind of get that money back into clubs and back into the student population at all? Um, we haven't really. That's kind of been like our baseline because we're able to bring in, I mean, throughout all of our clubs, we bring in quite a bit of money throughout the year. And mm -hmm. our main goal is just getting back all of the money that our clubs raise is trying to get it back to the clubs so they can give it back to their members and back to the the students at the school so we haven't we haven't yet done anything about like mm -hmm. bringing that balance down a little bit this is kind of just where we've been hovering around for the past couple of years yeah well maybe something you know going forward you guys might look at ways that you know that can be utilized um instead of just saved um your book costs yeah, your book exactly. costs, ASB yeah. yeah um any of those things but i mean otherwise a really well thought out presentation um really just proud of you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Student Representative Colley. I just thought it was a great presentation. I really like your guys' positivity hall hallway. That seems amazing. Um, but yeah, you guys did really good. Thank you. Um, I was able to attend the multicultural night and I have to say a wonderful job on that. It was amazing and I got to bring my friend and family there. So yeah. <laughs> Well, I had the opportunity, I guess you would say, to come over during the lip dub, which was really wonderful to see this, you know, see uh, the whole school involved in it. And especially uh, Principal Joe Cool walking down the aisle way. I thought that was really fun. And the positivity hallway, it reminded me of being there and you, I saw the enchanted, uh, enchanted forest hallway and then I saw the um, Sesame Street, I think it was, the hallway. And so I really was totally uh, excited 
for the school spirit. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, I could see at Jackson is it's high. It's really high. And it's high when you start saying 70 clubs. That's a lot of clubs and to be engaged with. And, and I, I hear you when you say when they submit information it's it's hard to keep track of them so that's you know i hand it to you for being able to do that i did have a question on your yearbook costs it has gone up quite a bit this from last year at sixty seven thousand to seventy five thousand perhaps using some of that fund balance to offset the cost of the yearbook to bring it down might be an idea but um, that's for you to make that decision and uh, think about that because uh, it's important for you to engage and figure out where you can do that. But I also think bringing that fund balance down so that you can lessen the burden on some of our families out there that may not have the funds. How much are ASB cards at Jackson? I believe our ASB cards this year were $45 per student. Mm -hmm. And then as Eugene said, we had a good amount of students this year that got free ASB cards from House Bill 1660 and the next year we expect um, even more of these of uh, those students to get free ASB cards just mm -hmm. because we're going to make it um, like more well known for people so it's it's easier for them to get the information they need in order to sign up for everything and get the free ASB card. Well, I, I do like the clubs big numbers being high because that opens up the doors for those kids that can't find a club and want to figure out, well, where, where could I be involved in what community? So it gives them different opportunities to look out there and see what's available for them. Because there are still some kids that aren't in clubs, aren't in athletics. And so we have to see how can we engage them in other school spirit involvement. And uh, the number of clubs causes it to go up, participation to go up. So that's a good thing. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation. It, you did an excellent job. Let's bring the fund balance down, work on that, see how we can give the money back into the hands of those students. And uh, excellent job, excellent job. And you should be congratulated. I just wanna to comment to all our student leaders and to our teacher sponsors, not only were you poised and clear, but you showed amazing leadership presenting it tonight. I'd like to give everybody one more round of applause. Again, I'd like to also thank the high schools. Um, there are ASP treasurers and their advisors and assistant principals in helping build this budget because we couldn't do this without them. And, and the work you did this year was amazing. And, and we're glad to have you guys back full in full force in that piece. Thank you very much. We're going to take about a 10 minute break because um, one, I know that some of the um, ASB students probably don't want to sit through the remainder of this, but gives you a chance to also congratulate each other because you have an awesome job at your school, but you have uh, contacts in other schools that you can probably uh, talk with. So we'll take a 10 minute recess.
I'd like to call back to order the Everett Public School Board of Directors meeting. <coughs> we'll now move on to section 13.0, which is unfinished business. Policy 1140 is on the schedule, the agenda for tonight, and Mr. Fleckenstein is at the podium. Well, good evening. A proposed revisions to policy 1140 were provided for first week reading at the April 25th, 2023 board meeting. Feedback was provided by directors for staff to clarify when student representatives may provide the board with advisory votes. The proposed uh, revisions are for your consideration this evening. Directors, do you have any questions or comments? Director Mason? Just a comment. You did a great job. Thank you very much for um, the new language. It's, it's much clearer. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any further comments? I do like the changes. I uh, appreciate it. It narrows it down so it's not, you know, a vote when we do the agenda or, you know, or consent agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very clear now. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll move this on to second reading for, uh, by general consent. Sounds perfect. Okay, we're now ready for section 14.0, which is new business. <coughs> there is an item in new business that we have on, a, on the agenda, and that's approval of the administrative salary schedules one, salary schedules two, uh, the school administrative salary schedules, for, professional and technical salaries, classified non-representative, non-exempt salary schedules, and the certificated non-supervisory salary schedules. The question was that we were going to open the floor to the directors for discussion, to provide some discussion on these, these schedules. Directors, do you have any questions or comments you wish to propose at this time i do <laughs> so director mason um so i had asked to pull this item off the consent agenda because um i wanted to reiterate what the board had discussed at our february budget uh, meeting where when we were looking at um reductions and pretty significant ones this year that salaries are such a, a large portion of that budget. And I think um, in the discussions that we had at that time, we talked about a couple goals as a board and how we would like to guide future negotiations with our um, different groups. And, and one is that, that salaries remain competitive um, especially with surrounding districts. And that's always kind of a moving target and something that needs to be looked at and reassessed fairly frequently. And then the other is that the cost of living increases are equitable across all groups. And um, because some groups are large and have a lot of members um, and, and dedicated leadership, and some of our groups are small and have less so, and some are represented, and some are not, it has not always been that way in the past. And um, the discussion that me and my colleagues, and I'll turn it over to them next to express their own opinions, but what we've talked about is we'd like to change some of that as a board and um, make it more equitable moving forward across the district. We weren't quite able to do that this year due to the significant budget reductions and primarily due to um, contracts that have already been negotiated and already in place. So um, I just wanted to be able to have that conversation um, before we approve these contracts to help um, our staff and our community understand what our what our goals look like. Any further comments or questions? I would like to provide one thing. Our greatest, and I've said this before many, many times, our greatest resource that we have here at Everett Public Schools is our employees. And that is not specific to any particular union or bargain group. Our greatest asset are each and every one of our employees that work here that provide or touch our students. 
and we value each and every one of them, not at any particular level. We don't value our teachers over and above our administrators. We don't value our administrators over and above our teachers. Everyone has value and everyone should be included in an equitable outcome on what salaries we provide or increases in salaries that we provide our people. No one should be forced to do something uh, and get something removed as a result of be feeling that they are inadequate because they're not or feeling that because your group is not very powerful or is not being heard or is small nothing should be you, you should never feel that that is the situation that just because you have a, a a group of membership of 30 people or 28 people that you're less valued and this is one of my biggest concern and has been for the board and for me since the 12 years I've been on here, everyone should be treated fairly and with respect and valued completely. And I don't want anyone to feel that just because you're not part of a, an a organization that's larger that your voice is not heard. So we wanted to take this time to allow the public as well as the rest of the school district to hear what we have to say we've been uh, in a situation with a, a reduced educational program because of things beyond our control in some respects the pandemic was beyond our control the pr increases of prices for things is beyond our control we can't uh, um, keep up with those things and now we have a budget deficit. But it is not the reason that you may not get a certain um, um, salary increase is not because we do not value. It is because we're at a situation where we cannot go forward with additional funds. So we wanted to be able to express that as a board and say that. I would move to approve this uh, item. Megan? I would move to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Are there any further discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving this item, please respond by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. This item has been approved. Thank you, Chad. So we'll now move on to section 15.0, which is upcoming agenda items. Dr. Salton, would you provide the synopsis? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Directors, and the public this evening. At the May 16th special meeting, the board will conduct the superintendent's evaluation. At the May 23rd regular meeting, the board agenda will contain the following. Performance from Jackson High School's orchestra, student representative selections, superintendent's contract, Annual Comprehensive Report for the 2021-22 Fiscal School Year, WIAA Membership, Library and Instructional Materials Surplus, and several policy updates at that time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Salzman. We'll now move on to Section 16.0, which is Executive Closed, um, executive closed Session. There is no Executive or Closed Session planned for the evening. We had one before, but it's not planned for now. Moving on to section 17.0, which is adjournment. This concludes the business of this scheduled to come before the board of directors. It is this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much for your participation this evening. Thank you.